When it comes to geospatial data, or building what's called a chloropleth map, Excel isn't always the first thing to come to mind. A lot of people instead choose shinier data viz tools like Tableau or other web-based options. But the thing is, with Excel's new Power Map plugin, geospatial analysis is actually really easy and really simple. So in this example, I'm going to give you a very, very quick demonstration of how the Power Map tool works, just to start to scratch the surface of some of its capabilities. So when it comes to geospatial data, the idea is that you're trying to visualize any sort of location-based data. That could be locations defined by zip codes, cities, states, countries, etc. So examples, frequency of accidents by street address, unemployment rate by country, average rainfall by state. All of these examples are location-based and geospatial in nature. So pro tips, like I mentioned, you can use Excel's Power Map plugin to create geospatial visualizations as well as animate changes over time. Now Excel's Power Map tool was introduced in 2013 and it only applies to certain versions of Excel. So if you're not sure whether or not you have it, go ahead and check out support.office.com to see if you can enable the plugin. Second pro tip, utilize attributes like color and size to visualize multiple attributes at once. So let's do a quick demo of how this Power Map tool actually works. In the Power Map tab, you'll see three columns of data. I've got state level data with average household income figures as well as the state population. So what I can do is select cell A1, and I'm going to use a shortcut here and hold Control, Shift, arrow right, arrow down. Note that in this case I can't select the entire columns A through C. I have to select the distinct array containing data for this to work. So once I have my selection made in the insert menu, here I have my 3D map option. This is my power map option. So I can go ahead and click that. And as you can see, it launches Power Map and it automatically starts to populate the data for me based on what geospatial attributes it can find. So in this case, I don't need the tour window because I'm not going to be creating an animation. And I don't need the field list just yet. What I will do is change to a flat map view. And I'll add map labels just to see exactly what I'm working with. So these options here allow me to move tilt and zoom to customize my view and all it's done so far is just drop data points on each state so here in my layer tab you can see that it's dropped state as my location field and it's automatically assigned it as a state or province so why don't we go ahead and add a name to this layer why don't we call it household income and now it's defaulted to showing the visualization as a stacked column. So all it needs is a height in order to visualize some data. So I can select household income here. And as you can see, it creates those columns by state where the height of the column represents the average household income. So this box, I can just go ahead and delete that to get it out of the way. And I have other options here as well. I have clustered columns. I've got bubbles, heat maps, and regional charts as well. So for instance, if I change to clustered column and I add a field for population, it will add a second column as well. Obviously in this case, it's a little bit tough to read. So I'm gonna delete both of those options and let's switch over to the region view, which essentially populates the view by highlighting the shapes or areas that represent the regions in my data set, in this case, states. So the value that I want to show by region is average household income. And what I can do here down at the bottom in my layer options is to adjust things like the color scale and the opacity, as well as the color that I'm working with. So I'll do shades of red here. And now as you can see hovering over, that states like California and states like Minnesota have very high average household incomes. Minnesota is 61,814. Whereas on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Mississippi with 36,919, West Virginia with 38,000, and so on and so forth. So in a matter of minutes, I've created this really nice, really simple geospatial map using Excel's Power Map tool. And last but not least, 
I've got a few other options here that I'll quickly breeze through. You can add a 2D chart and format it as necessary if you want to add an additional element to this. You can also capture your screen and use this image as an input in other places. And last but not least, like I mentioned earlier, you can create multiple scenes here and then link them together in a video or an animation. So Excel's Power Map tool is actually really simple, really intuitive, and really powerful.